Hey guys and welcome back to the channel. My name is Ty and this is DIY Space. If this is your first time on the channel, make sure to hit the like and the subscribe button down below. Today in this video, I'll be talking about my Surface Laptop Studio two months after. Two months ago, I started my search for a laptop. I needed something that would be able to help me uh, with my video content creation as well as my professional IT consulting business. I did come across the laptop studio at the time and um, it seems like it, it seemed like it was going to meet or it was going to check all my uh, requirements. I mean, I needed something that was powerful enough to help me edit my 4K videos as well as edit pictures and, you know, using Photoshop, Adobe Premiere. I also needed something that was versatile and powerful and, uh, you know, portable enough as well to be able to carry around with me. To the field to do assessments and you know troubleshooting and fixing stuff on the field this laptop seemed to check all of that mark i mean especially the fact that it had that three stage mode where it had the the stage mode the laptop mode as well as the surface mode that thing uh that feature at the time was eye-catching it was it, it was it seemed uh also kind of seemed gimmicky at the time but it's been two months after and i must say this thing has a lot of features that has drawn me into the laptop and made me even fall in love with the laptop even more. However, it also comes with a bunch of drawbacks and downside that's also leave on the line right now, not being able, to, not being sure if I really want to keep this laptop or not, or if I'm gonna jump ships. But I'm gonna just talk about my experience with this laptop real quick in this video. Starting out with the number one thing I really do like about this laptop. I mean, this laptop is very portable in the sense that it comes with that 14.4 inch display that makes it the perfect size to be able to fit into any existing bag, fits right in. And when you combine that with the aluminum casing that this laptop is wrapped with, it makes this laptop very, very uh, durable. I mean, the casing reminds me of the MacBook Pro from 2012 that I had back in the day. Now that laptop was very rugged. It took so much beating and, and I dropped it so many times and that laptop just kept running till the very end until I just dropped it. Now this laptop is perfect for zooming. I do a lot of zoom calls with, you know, I mean with COVID now, a lot of the meetings are all zoom. With the 1080p front facing camera on this laptop, as well as the dual far field microphone, this laptop, it makes it the perfect laptop for joining zoom meetings and, you know, attending Skype meetings as well. Any teleconferencing events I needed to join, even sometimes I join webinars as well on this laptop and it is amazing in the sense that it's there everyone is able to every other participant on the call they're able to hear me quite clearly and quite audibly and the front facing camera is fantastic when i'm on the road if i decide that okay i wanted to catch up on you know netflix or you know my netflix tv show or whatever when i have a little bit of a downtime and time to kill this laptop comes with that oled 120 hertz display that's capable of Dolby Vision as well. So if you're, when I'm catching up on my altered cable, which I'm watch, currently watching on Netflix right now, this display is fantastic. That OLED display gives that rich, deep black as well as enhanced uh, all the, you know, all the other colors there. So you have that really, really, really uh, cinematic experience when it comes to the display on this thing. And it doesn't just stop at that. That it, the speakers on this thing is it's, it's fantastic. I love it. it I, this has got to be the best speakers I've ever had on any of my laptops I've used over the past seven years. Now this thing's got the quad omnisonic speakers, that's four of them, as well as a subwoofer built into it. So you don't even need to use headphones to enjoy these speakers. And the speaker is also Dolby Atmos. So you're gonna feel like you're actually in the cinema room when you're watching this, I mean, almost like in the cinema when you're watching your TV show on this laptop. I really do like it for that. Compared to my old laptop, this is a major, major upgrade. Another thing I really love about this laptop is the three modes in which you can set this laptop to be in. Starting out with the laptop mode. I mean, I love the fact that it, you can still keep it back in the same laptop mode and still use it like a regular laptop and uh, it works perfectly fine. However, I've had issues with using this laptop in the laptop mode. This laptop starts to overheat. It runs, it, it starts to run quite hot underneath the laptop and it starts to get quite uncomfortable to use it in that mode. Many of the times I end up having to, you know, put it down on the ground or try and put like a, some sort of a buffer in between the laptop and my legs because it can get really unbearable and it gets hot enough to even sometimes fry an egg behind this laptop. 
The second mode I do like and I love the most and I do use it a lot in my office is the stage mode. In the stage mode it kind of tilts this thing up into like a 45 degree angle and then it kind of exposes only just the trackpad and um, you don't have access to the keyboard anymore but you can I mean because this thing is actually a touch screen as well you can still kind of do things around the screen but I do love it especially for the improved ergonomics for me in my office space. So in my office, I used to previously set my laptop on the far right of the monitor. So anytime I had to use the screen on the laptop, I was always constantly turning my head all the way to the far right and back to my main display. But with this, I just actually set it right underneath my LG 34 inch ultra wide. And I use this screen primarily for then you're sorting through footages and selecting footages I want to use and then dragging it up onto the timeline above for you know editing in Adobe Premiere. The third mode which is the Surface, Microsoft calls it the Surface mode but for me I call it just the tablet mode because it basically turns this thing into a tablet right and then it becomes completely flat and looks like a tablet. In this mode when you pair it up with the Surface uh, Pen then you can do things like drawing and writing but for me I just find that the, the surface paint is way too overpriced and way too expensive and I don't need it and it also has that uh, you know magnetic piece on there where you can actually just put the once you put the pen there it, it sticks right onto the body of the thing because it's magnetic enough to hold the magnetic pen but for me I think if you're gonna get a magnetic pen just get something off of Amazon there's a lot of other cheaper options compared to the really expensive pen that Microsoft sells but if only if you do need it and use it to do lots of those drawing functionalities which I don't care or need. Very functional for me in the field, especially when I'm out in the field trying, you know, say at, at the client's um, site or facility and I'm trying to investigate and troubleshoot existing issues or actually set up a brand new setup like say surveillance cameras or, you know, the set up their wireless, inter wireless infrastructure or their network infrastructure, right? With this laptop, I'm able to kind of just walk around and, you know, plug into things and check the status of things, check the Wi-Fi strength in the area, just kind of holding it on my palm like it is a tablet, but it is powerful. It has the power of a laptop because tablets are quite limited in terms of what they can do and the available software that's on it. But this, I still get to keep all of my software, but this time around, I can use it in a tablet mode. However, this is not optimized for when you put it into the tablet mode it doesn't get optimized into a tablet mode it still gives you that same display which can be a, which can be a pain as well because now things that you would have normally used the cursor to select now you have to use your finger try and use your finger to kind of click those things or you know kind of select things or move things around it can be frustrating if you try to do too much on this screen so I only reserve it for, for you know, very, very small tasks that doesn't require lots of complex actions on the screen. So just a little bit of things there, here and there. But I think it, I love it for that. It's just, it's, just very, it's just quite nice to be able to go around and you even use it to take notes even as a student, right? If you want to, if you go to class and you want to you know, write notes, just being able to convert your laptop into that just it's it's a fantastic uh, laptop in that regard one area where this laptop actually does excel is also the power right this laptop comes equipped with that intel 11th gen processor which is the i7 and it's a quad core as well as the nvidia uh, 3050 ti graphics card paired up with a 16 gigs of ram now this laptop goes through everything and anything i'm able to run multiple applications i run uh, adobe photoshop you know editing at the same time and then i have photoshop uh, adobe premiere run editing 4k and then adobe photoshop you know editing pictures while having number numerous tabs opened up on chrome and i'm even doing screen records at the same time in the background right and this laptop handles it like a best like a champion right and even on the network side, I'm also running uh, a network sync of my files between my computer and my network attached storage, which is my Unraid NAS box, right? And these things are all running simultaneously on this laptop. I mean, you see that it's actually the pop up, the perform, you can see it's running through a lot of things at the same time. However, the one big downside with this laptop is the fact that this thing comes with Windows 11. Windows 11 is just, it's frustrating right now. It does, it, it crashes 
a lot. I've had a lot of each, uh, times where I'm in the middle of an edit and the laptop just goes into blue screen of death and crashes. Luckily for me, I always make sure I embrace that model of always saving as I go. I was thinking it was something with the laptop itself, but I've heard from other people that use Windows 11 and they've been experiencing lots of crashes as well. So that has made me to actually shift the blame from the laptop itself to the operating system. Windows is notorious for that anyways, even down to Windows 10, Windows 7, Windows 8, we've, uh, we, those of us that use Windows know that, that those kind of crashes are quite common with the operating system but yeah it's one of the frustrating things about this laptop is just the operating system i mean there are even situations where the screen starts to flicker right like you know like the screen is bad it starts to flicker and all the icons are kind of just just gets disorientated and all over the place and you can't even use it and i have to kind of try and add reset the computer to be able to get it back into functioning state I would be pinning that towards the most likely towards the operating system and not the laptop itself. But unfortunately, the laptop and the operating system, they are, it's 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 a one package thing. You can't isolate one from the other. So it is still part of the overall experience and it's a, it's a major downside. While this laptop is a fantastic and a great laptop, there are still a few other drawbacks with this laptop. Majorly, the fact that this thing lacks ports. Now, this laptop only comes equipped with two USB-C or Thunderbolt for port which i find very frustrating i'm like microsoft said or claims that this laptop was designed for content creators and um as a content creator myself one of the most used port as a content creator is a micro sd card all the cameras even the latest ones still use the micro sd card to be able to record you know the footage on the camera and transfer them to your laptop for edit so i don't understand who made that decision at microsoft to you know remove the sd or not even include an sd port on the laptop you claim is for professionals and content creators and the person that made that decision i don't know what the person was thinking and the fact that they didn't even include that usb 3.0 port on this laptop as well it's, it's like why what the hell were they thinking right trying to exclude that because Mac, uh, apple did try to go this exact same route with their macbook uh, 2016 uh, pro right and it was a fail right they realized that they needed and they needed to put those ports back which is why they did that in their new apple laptop so i'm not sure why microsoft would then go down that same path the, many of these ports are not going anywhere anytime soon so trying to force people towards the usb c line is just a it's, it's a brutal mistake right lots of devices and gadgets still use usb 3.0 still use micro sd port and they're not going anywhere anytime soon so why remove that right now I find that quite frustrating i wish that they would uh, have kept a lot of those ports on there so that we can be able to I can be able to use it for things like troubleshooting because I go to a site, uh, some some of my clients' places, I mean, when the network is down, when the internet is not working, the only way to be able to fix and try and troubleshoot or fix the network is to plug into the network. But if I can do that without an ethernet port or a USB port or, you know, any of any other port besides the USB-C, now I, I am kind of limited, right? I can't do anything with it. So I found myself in many situations where I didn't have a dongle i'm having to you know i needed a dongle for the most nonsense reasons right i i didn't have it so i ended up having to go back to my old laptop to be able to get some of this job done i mean even my old dell laptop right comes with about the same size the same thickness the same weight comes with usb port it comes with an ethernet port comes with a micro sd port it even comes with a usb c or thunderbolt port 4 and a charging port so i wish that microsoft would have done that with this laptop another thing i like i find frustrating about this laptop is the lack of upgradability of this laptop now on the rear side of this laptop it there is no screws whatsoever for you to be able to just pop open the back of the laptop to say you want to upgrade say upgrade your ssd or the ram on this thing right i found myself in a situation whereby i did buy this laptop in uh 512 uh ssd storage on it and now i'm like okay that memory storage is not enough anymore and i thought it was going to be great but now i find myself always having to delete stuff off the computer to be able to get it to you know to have space to be able to do anything on this laptop but now in my old laptop, all I had to do was pop the back open and then swap out the uh, the the M.2 SSD there and change it into something bigger, into into the M.2 NVMe one terabyte. But I can't really do that with this laptop. I mean, it's sealed in. I could. There might be. There's probably there are probably ways to get into it. I mean, you have to use it gone and try and pop it open, and you could. There are a lot a lot of things could go wrong by trying to even. 
do anything on this laptop so i wouldn't even recommend anyone to try and do it so i would have really liked to see a situation where microsoft embraced that path of upgradability right because that what that does is invariably cost is the lifespan of this laptop has been shortened right because if you can't upgrade components on this thing within the next two to three years you find out that a lot of parts start to get obsolete and you're forced to trash the laptop so which means we have more and more devices going to the landfill instead of being able to still get more life out of this laptop i still have one of my old my i have uh, my old uh, lenovo laptop from 2000 which i bought in 2010 I'm still using it till today. The only limitations I have on that thing now is just the processor, right? It's a third gen Intel processor, but and we're already at 11th gen. So upgrading it will mean replacing the entire board. But over the years, I've been able to go from hard drive to uh, solid state drive and keep upgrading on the size of the hard drive and even the RAM on that thing. And I've kind of been able to use it for over 10 years now. This laptop, I don't see myself being able to use it past the five year mark because of the rate at which technology keeps changing and i can't even upgrade anything on this thing so it's quite frustrating that i can't do that in conclusion um this laptop however it's a fantastic laptop checks a lot of the boxes for me but there are a lot of things that it's it misses out on which is a big deal for me and at the price point there are lots of other fantastic options on the market that i would be willing to try out and consider most especially the all new um apple's uh, m1 uh cheap laptop i heard i've heard lots of rave reviews about that laptop and it's just i can get one at about the same price as this one right now i just bought one and i'm going to give that a try and see if the apple os will be a, a good alternative to this windows 11 on this laptop for me because the windows 11 and the lack of ports on this thing is a deal it's, it's a really big deal for me but the MacBook does come with a different operating system, a powerful processor, and even comes with the you know macro SD slots as well on it. So stay with me, stay tuned, and um, as soon as I get that laptop unboxed and uh, reviewed, I'll let you guys, I'll keep you guys posted on my experience with that, and we'll see if it's enough for me to justify leaving my love for Windows and switch into the Mac ecosystem again. All right, guys, thank you so much for joining me today on this video, and I hope uh, it's been informative for you. And if you do like it, don't forget, hit the like button. Drop your comments if you've also had issues with your Windows 11 computer so far, because, I mean, Microsoft just made it open to the public. So let's, let me know what, you, what issues you've been having with your Windows 11. I'd love to see it and know if it's my computer or if it's the operating system. Thank you so much, and peace.